So go into, just to quickly show you, I'm gonna import uh, an asset I already made to, to make this cloth simulation. You can check out CG Matters. He just posted a, a really cool how to do this with geometry nodes. You can take a look at that. I have the link down in the description. And there was another YouTuber that I follow where CG Matter got the idea for this. Uh, this guy right here, uh, what's his ATTI? This is the, the version I followed. It's a little bit more complicated the way he did it. It's not as complicated, but he doesn't go into detail like CJ Mat CG Matter did. I had to figure out a couple things on my own that he didn't mention, like uh, exporting out Olympic files and stuff like that. So uh, I did a combination of both. Like I did the first time I did it with the geometry nose, which worked out really well. And then I did his version and um, I kind of did a mixture of both. So what I'll do in another video tutorial, I'll break down how I put this together using his uh, his basically version and the, the, the things and the points that he missed. Right. So what I'm going to do is import that Olympic file because it's already done and ready to go. And we'll come in here to file import Olympic. And that's the animation there. Right. So what I need to do is size it up, bring it in. So, for example, let's go GZ. Let's bring it up. It's actually pretty huge. I'll probably bring it down just a tad bit more. Right. And then what I'll probably do is actually GY it back a little bit. And let's see what that's looking like. And maybe move it over a little bit so it's kind of centered here in the frame. And what I want, since it's expanding, like it's the start of the, I don't want that into the shot. So what I'll do is I'll start my render at probably about 40. I'll start it at 40. Actually, I'm going to leave it at a one because I'll cut it off in DaVinci Resolve so it lines up with the final plate. We got that going right there. And I think it's still a little bit too big right there. It's, but that's fine because I'm going to cut that part out of the video. But I do want to make sure it doesn't go through because what that means, it'll be going through the wall, right? So it is a little bit big. Let's still scale it down just a tad bit. All right, good. That's what it's looking like there. Go ahead and hit save. And then what I want to do quickly while we got time left here, we got a couple more minutes is quickly set up the light. So I'm going to go into render mode. Make sure you go down to click on film. Make sure you turn that to transparent, turn that off so you can see your background. Otherwise you won't see it. Now you can see everything is black because actually I have this on the, the wrong layer. So I'm gonna put this on the foreground layer and I want the background, everything else that I built, the ground plane, that's on the background. So that's gonna be the shadow, right? Transparent, actually no, transparent is on, okay, good. And what I'm gonna do is put the video texture on this here. And actually, it was a cloudy day. So I'm going to load in a cloudy day HDR. All right, here's a cloudy HDR. That's really good for this scene. And then what I'm going to do is switch over, click on this. We're going to add a texture to this new. And then what I'm going to do is press here, press Control T. And let's load in the video plate onto this. So again, going back to that folder where we kept everything nice and tidy, import that. And then what I do is I set this to window. And for the sake, I'm gonna drag it onto the foreground layer so I can see what I'm working with, right? Okay, and I can clearly see that it should be on the wall here. And right now it is a shadow catcher, so we can't see it. So what I wanna do is I wanna see it just to make sure it's on there. And I'm gonna go into visibility turn off shadow catcher. All right. And there it is. The texture is being on put onto the wall here. So if we go into that, look at that. Nice. So now we're getting the colors and the reflections back onto this, which is really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that back to shadow catcher. I'm going to go ahead and drag that onto my background layer. What I'm going to do is go to about a frame here in the middle where we got some good stuff happening. Okay. So then basically I would put a material on this. And then, you know, really reinforce the lighting, get the lighting as close as possible. Already the lighting is looking fairly close and pretty much that's it. So we're out of time. That was about 30 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and render this out and get everything set up. Typically when I render this, uh, let me show you this really fast here. I got a couple of uh, other settings here. Let's go ahead and delete all of this. So what I got here on my render settings, I'm going to end up actually just rendering out just the 3D stuff composite everything back inside of uh, blah, 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 DaVinci Resolve. But for a moment, I wanna show you one little key trick that I tend to do. So here's my undistortion node, right? I'm gonna take a copy of that and I'm gonna put it over here at the end. 
because what I want to do is use this data from this distortion node to redistort my new 3D. Right now it's set to undistort. I'm going to click distort. So what it's going to do is when I render out a frame, let's go ahead and set up a quick render. All right, so there we go. We got this here. And let me quickly show you the difference. So when I have this redistort node on here, that's going to be basically the lens distortion from my camera. This is what they do in Hollywood, right? So they, we took it off, we undistorted it, and now we want to put it back on and we want the CG to also confirm to it. So if I show you quickly here, sometimes it's a very minute difference. Let's see here. You can, quite, you can see a little bit the, the CG is basically, and that's basically putting the lens distortion back on. Just really help you to take it up another level. And uh, that's why this whole setup here is very important. Take a look at this video here, which we're going to put the whole comp together inside DaVinci Resolve. Peace.